Hello and welcome to the World Today on Channels Television. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The Sumi Regional Military Administration said shelling by Russian forces overnight in the northern Sumi region has killed two people and caused extensive damage. It also adds that four other cities were struck by Russian shells. According to the military administration, the Ukrainian city of Bilopilia also suffered 80 hits from rockets, 20 from artillery, and was hit by an airstrike. Two people were killed and nine people were injured. Residential and administrative buildings were also damaged and destroyed. Meanwhile, three people have been killed in the city of Nostatikivia in the eastern Donetsk region. And that's after Russian missiles slammed into the invisibility point set up to offer refuge for Ukrainian civilians. Video released by Donetsk region police shows rescuers helping the victims in the remains of the damaged building. The invisibility point was, that was hit overnight is one of many such shelters created by authorities across Ukraine to help provide access access to electricity, heating, water, and other basic services. French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and other European leaders have arrived for the second day of the EU summit. The summit, which takes place in Brussels, sees leaders commenting on the banking crisis and the European Union's competitiveness. We do not see any risk uh, for the moment, and that's the result of all the investments we did since 2008, 2009, of very strict rules that we have. I think the regulation is also quite different in Europe than in the United States, and, and we see that the reaction to an event like what we, uh, what we saw is, uh, is, is, is different in the, uh, in the, in the, in the Eurozone. Um, but it shows that we also need to continue looking forward. And what we lack is this, this finalized banking union, this finalized um, capital markets union. And, and I think that should only motivate us to continue doing that. When we are looking towards U.S., for example, and our uh, competition towards U.S. and China, then um, concentrating on that might mean that uh, the small countries or small companies will not benefit from this and, uh, and only the big ones maybe who are not that defective uh, will benefit because we do the subsidy schemes. What everybody understands is that even the very rich countries will run out of taxpayers' money if we subsidize the, the gap that we have in the competitiveness. And what we should focus on is how to make this uh, European economy more competitive. We should try to cooperate with the US on climate action uh, rather than ending up in a subsidy race which would be just taxpayers money for companies um, and also that there has to be more to competitiveness than state aid we need to focus on, on innovation on training on research on education uh, on realizing the potential of a banking union of a capital markets union uh, a single market in digital and services European Union leaders held talks with UN Chief Antonio Guterres on global food security and sanctions imposed on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine and also endorsed a plan to supply more artillery shells to Kiev. Mr Guterres' participation in the EU the summit Soviet comes days after the renewal of the deal brokered by the United Nations and Turkey on the safe export of Ukrainian uh, grain via the Black Sea, which is seen as a crucial into overcoming global food crisis. EU Chief Executive Commission President said that any new sanctions against Russia will mostly crack down on circumvention. It is a horrible reminder of the darkest times of our history, what's happening there, to deport children. This is a war crime. We know today of 16,200 children that have been deported. Only 300 have returned so far. And these criminal actions completely justify the arrest warrants issued by the ICC. I, we have introduced the possibility in the 10th package um, on listing either personalities or um, companies or entities where we see, also in third countries, that they circumvent the sanctions. So a bundle of measures taken already 
but this is certainly not enough, and therefore the 11th package of san sanctions will also and mainly deal with the question of circumvention and how we can, um, uh, how we can get against it, go against it. Uh, the negotiations are progressing. This is the will, uh, there is the will on both sides to resolve this topic and to resolve it within the scope of the provisional agreement that has been found between Council and Parliament. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has asked Europe to increase and speed up its supply of weapons to its country as, it's, as well as impose additional sanctions on Russia, saying that otherwise the war could drag on for years. In a video address to EU leaders delivered from a train, Mr. Zelensky said it was up to the 27-nation bloc to take action to contain Russia more than a year into its invasion of Ukraine. In particular, he reiterated demands for long-range missiles more ammunition and more modern aircraft and said the EU needed to speed up the process to grant Ukraine membership. If Europe hesitates, the evil may have time to regroup and prepare for years of war. It is in your power to prevent this. It is in our common power to free Ukraine from Russian aggression this year. The more often Ukrainian artillery hits the occupier, the less chance Russia has to implement its genocidal policy against Ukrainians and other Europeans. Despite the fact that every hour on the battlefield matters, the delay in the supply of long-range missiles is already significant for Ukraine. And this does not allow us to push back the positions of Russian terrorists, in particular from Kherson, Zaporizhia and our other cities, which are constantly shelled by Russian long-range missiles. Sanctions must be expanded. There can be no hint of delay in sanctions decisions. Moreover, well, the Kremlin says that it is important to identify an object discovered next to one of the Nord Stream pipelines and said the ongoing investigation into blasts that struck the pipelines last September must be conducted with full transparency. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said, told reporters that it was a positive sign that Denmark had invited the Russian-controlled operator of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to help salvage an, an, an unidentified object found close to the bolts C pipelines. And three of the four pipelines of the Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 gas links were hit in a still unexplained explosion last September. Russia has without evidence blamed Britain and the United States for the blasts, while European investigators have not said who they believe was responsible for it. Slovak Defense Ministry says Slovakia has handed over the first four MIG-29 jets it has pledged to donate to Ukraine with the rest of the planes to be delivered in the coming weeks. Slovakia, a NATO member of the military alliance's eastern flank, just last week joined Poland in announcing the delivery of jets to Ukraine. In total, Slovakia said it will donate 13 of the Soviet-made fighter jets, which Kiev believes are crucial to repel Russia's year-long invasion. And let's bring in Anna Chernikova, who joins me now for more on this. Hello, Anna. Good to see you again. Good evening. Yeah, so give us an update of what's really happening. Another strike has been reported in the Sumi region and even in eastern Donetsk. What is happening? Um, well, yesterday late evening, it was another drone attack uh, almost across the whole country, actually, but uh, except uh, except western part of the country, so central, north, east, uh, and south. Uh, and it was uh, quite a high risk uh, of drone attacks in, in Kyiv and Kyiv region, uh, but according to the official reports, no drones reached the area. Uh, but uh, we have reports from the north uh, part of the country, particularly Sumy region, uh, and Sumy is an uh, um, area which is bordering Russia uh, in the north. Um, there are uh, quite bad damages uh, due to the drone attack uh, with, uh, well, again, again, according to the latest um, data that we have, 
uh, available from the local uh, authorities, um, there are uh, at least uh, two people uh, dead and nine people wounded. Uh, if we talk about eastern part of the country, uh, Konstantinivka, it was also overnight attack. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there are also victims. Uh, and um, uh, it was uh, a missile attack, uh, according again to the local uh, authorities. Um, what we also know for this point of time that uh, actually one of the, mm, so at least three people were killed and uh, one of the missiles uh, hit the area of so-called point of, um, point, point of uh, invincibility, which is uh, a certain point where people can charge their phones, uh, get some hot food and water. And basically, these points were created across the country when electricity outages started. But uh, particularly in this, uh, closer to the front line, uh, more important uh, these uh, points are for people. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, this one of the points was uh, damaged. Uh, and uh, also to mention, uh, of course, uh, the city of Krivirih, which is Dnipropetrovsk region, which is uh, also eastern, more eastern part of the country, and this is a hometown of President Zelensky, actually. Uh, this city was also attacked by drones. According to the uh, local authorities, uh, six drones were targeting the city, uh, and only one was shot down. Uh, five uh, actually... Um, reached the target and hit the city. For the moment, there is no information about victims or um, wounded, uh, according to the local authorities again, but the damages are quite bad. Yeah. Anna, residential and administrative buildings were damaged. You just said the damage is quite bad, but do you know if critical infrastructure were also hit in that strike? Are there power blackouts? What are you hearing? Uh, particularly this latest attack, uh, we don't have any official reports that energy infrastructure was targeted. Uh, it looks more like that residential areas and um, civilian areas around uh, these towns uh, were under the, uh, under the attack mostly. Uh, and there is also no additional reports on any new outages or new energy uh, damages. Uh, so for the moment, uh, yeah, for the moment, uh, I cannot confirm that that latest particular attack was targeting energy infrastructure. But anyways, uh, I mean, such attacks when they're happening on the civil and residential uh, areas, um, unfortunately, they can lead to certain uh, troubles with energy supply in particular regions, uh, just due to the damages that uh, 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 which are resulting uh, of this attack. So uh, for the moment, this is what we have. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky had said the Western weapons can be a game changer for this war. Now, do you have ears on ground? Do you know if weapons have been delivered or maybe arriving to Ukraine? And we also know that Slovakia and Norway have sent their own tanks to Kiev this week alone. Uh, yeah, actually, we are getting uh, confirmations, uh, not much detailed, of course, uh, confirmations, but uh, more or less, uh, we hear that a number of countries have already transferred tanks uh, and um, more are on the way. Uh, we're also hearing that Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian soldiers are completing their trainings abroad and that they are supposed to come back uh, to Ukraine with military equipment. Uh, and also we're hearing that uh, some countries already started uh, and already confirmed um, the delivery of jets, uh, of, of, of Air Force jets to Ukraine, uh, such as Poland and Slovakia, for example, and more again to come. So uh, this information in the official sources uh, start to appear and of course this is quite a positive sign because according to Ukrainian military and President Zelensky also mentioned that, that Ukraine needs uh, this kind of equipment um, as so sooner, uh, uh, sooner better because uh, every day and every hour is basically 
playing uh, well a very important mm. role for Ukraine at the battlefield, and uh, of course, um, uh, I mean, uh, Ukraine is again, according to uh, official military. Uh, reports and President Zelensky reports uh, Ukraine is getting ready for this counteroffensive, which is supposed to happen sometime soon, uh, sooner or later. Again, we don't have uh, particular details on that. And of course, jets and tanks is crucial uh, for this operation. So, uh, yeah, so this is happening and uh, more to expect. All right. Thank you so much, Anna, for your update. VOA correspondent Anna Chernikova, thank you and please stay safe. Thank you. Sanctions on entities within major fertilizer exporter Russia after the invasion of Ukraine and a jump in the price of gas key in the infrastructure of nitrogen products have all pushed up prices of crop nutrients globally in the last one year. The Food and Agriculture Organization has named Zimbabwe, Malawi and Angola as countries in the southern part of Africa facing food insecurity due to the reduced fertilizer use. Helplessly walking through her failed maize field after waiting for months for free fertilizer from government, Malawian farmer Hawa Firi is left with no harvest. The smallholder farmer is one of many across Malawi's Kunda area, 35 kilometers from the capital Longwe, who has struggled to buy fertilizer during the 2022-23 planting season after prices spiked following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. As villagers, we do not have anything that will bring us money except for farming only. My plea to the government is to speed up the process of selling the subsidized fertilizer in good time, mainly for those of us that depend on farming. According to Agriculture Minister Sam Kowale, in Malawi, maize output has seen falling 4% this year after the government's affordable input program struggled to keep up with price increases. Fertilizer prices in Malawi have more than doubled in the past year, with a 50-kilogram bag retailing at 75,000 kwacha, putting pressure on the government's 109 billion kwacha budget for the input support program. Malawi was one of the first African countries to receive the donated fertilizer through the World Food Program, part of 260,000 tons of the Russian firm's fertilizer stock in several European ports. This is going to help the 400,000 farmers who would have been left out of the program because of the devaluation and the increase in fertilizer prices. So we are extremely grateful for Eurochem's donation. We believe that it is very high time for the Western countries to unblock Russian food and fertilizers impounded in some port of Western countries so we could uh, continue delivering uh, agricultural products to Africa and to other parts of the world. It's very important. Um, we live up to the commitments and we keep our word. So uh, what happens now in Malawi is a uh, clear demonstration that Russia can deliver despite the uh, challenges and threats of the new geopolitical situation. But for Zawani Maludi, a 45-year-old Malawian smallholder farmer who received some of the donated Russian fertilizer, help came too late. <laughs> She and other smallholder farmers can only hope that sanctions against benefactor countries will end soon and passage for fertilizer will be opened up.